So let's look at a different example. Now this includes a wheel and some weight. Now, this is like a hoist. Okay? A hoist that you can find in, let's say, um, a mine shaft um, where you have a big giant wheel and with a, with a really thick rope okay? and it's attached to uh, some kind of um, some kind of elevator, okay, some kind of um, um, con container, right, where you can transport people or or ores, okay, or minerals, whatever it is, okay. So this wheel is rotating about point B, and then this weight right here is A, okay. Some information is given. <coughs> the radius. Uh, this wheel is 600 millimeters, which is 0.6 meters. The mass of this wheel is given as 144 kilograms. And K is given. K is the radius of gyration. Okay? So K is given at 450 millimeters, which is nice because the mass of inertia about point B is simply M. A squared. And mass is given, so just plug it in and you're all set. Okay. And the mass of this load, A, is 18 kilograms. You're asked to find the acceleration at this instant if okay, it is released from rest. Okay. So at this moment, <coughs> the acceleration. Okay. It is assumed that everything is frictionless. Right, so there's no friction here at the wheel, no friction between the, the rope okay, and, the, and the wheels, and the air friction, everything's ignored. Okay. So, you're asked to find acceleration. So, obviously, this is uh, a kinetic type problem, and it involves actually two part of, um, rigid bodies. Okay. The first okay, is the wheel, which is rotating. The second, the you know, second object is this load right here, okay? and this load itself is not rotating, so this itself can be regarded as a particle actually, but the analysis is the same. So, taking these two as our entire system, okay, then we can apply those equations to this whole system, and that's more convenient this way. If you want to separate A from B. It's still possible, but it's more complicated because in that case, you have to take into account the tension, okay? Tension this rope, okay? Let's say a free body diagram for A, and right? we have the weight of A and tension of the uh, the rope, and free body diagram for B, then, you know, same thing, tension down here, everything else is going on. So you need to solve, you know, for both free body diagrams simultaneously, which is a little bit more involved. still possible. Let's take both as a system and simplify our analysis a little bit. Okay? So, next thing, let's draw a free body diagram and kinetic diagram. Okay, so I have this guy and this guy. Kinetic diagram, same thing. For free body diagram, I draw the forces okay, acting on this whole thing. External forces. So, here we have weight of A. Come straight down. So that's WA, which is MG. And we have weight of B, right? And it's acting through this point B right here, which is center of gravity. So weight B, which is MG. And also, since this is a pivot at the point, I have reaction forces. I have, let's call it FBX, and then FBY. Now the direction of these two reaction forces are arbitrary at this point because they are unknown. I don't know them. So I'm going to assume that it goes to the right and this goes up. That's it. If you don't know something, assume something. And just write the, uh, the arrows according to your assumptions and, and proceed with your calculation according to what you have assumed. Okay.
let's see, we have force right here and the force and the weight right here and then the two reaction forces and that's all. There's no other force acting on this entire system right here. Okay, move on to kinetic diagram which shows the acceleration terms. So for this wheel right here which is purely rotating about point B, I only have I alpha. I about point B. So I B times alpha. For this load right here, I have M A term. Mass of A times acceleration, which is the unknown. This is it. Alright, so I've taken care of all the acceleration and the odd forces. So next thing is apply those equations. So let's see, we have the sum of forces equation and I have the sum of moment equation about some point. Okay? Now let's first look at the sum of forces equation. Let's think about if this will be useful in our analysis. Now our unknown is A, the acceleration okay, of this load right here. Okay, and, and this would include the unknown. Sure, no problem. Okay. However, that's inside. Some forces it has to include all the forces acting on the entire system, which includes these two, which are unknown, okay. and these two are given as no problem. Okay. And the right hand side, I have this alpha and then the uh, deceleration, okay, which is the unknown. So the problem here is these two direction forces. I don't know them. Okay. So it's it's not really helping me okay, find the unknown. So I'm just gonna ignore that for now and just use the sum of moment equation. And keep in mind sum of moment equation is powerful if you choose the right point to take moment about. Okay? Choose a point where there are a lot of forces going through that through that point. In this case, point B it has all these forces going through it. Therefore, it is a good point to choose. Take moment about. Okay? So apply this equation. I'm going to say positive clockwise. So, left hand side, these three forces, or the moment created by these three forces, are zero. Okay? Because the moment arms are zero. So I'm not going to write it down. Okay? The only force that creates moment is this WA. So, weight A times moment arm. Okay. Moment arm is, look at this right here. This is the direction of this force. And you can extend this line of action of this force. Okay. So, moment arm is the shortest distance between the force vector and the point you take moment about which is point B. So the moment R is exactly the radius. Okay? Times R, which is six hundred millimeters. But don't plug in numbers just yet. Okay? Leave it until the end. That's all for the left hand side. Right hand side, I B alpha term. I about point B. Now since we have two objects here. Okay, so it's the sum okay, of this whole term. Okay, so each of them. Okay, so let's take care of it. For the fly wheel, okay, for this wheel for example. Okay. This term, I B times alpha, okay, is simply just I alpha about point B which is given here. So Y wheel times alpha, where this IB term is this right here. Okay, and you're plugging in later. Plus, with this load right here, okay, how do we take care of it? Now we have I alpha. What is alpha okay, doing here? 